What's going on guys? This is Logan here at Vaporleaf and I am here today with the TF series tanks. That means we're going to be looking at the Baby Beast, the Big Baby Beast, the TF V8, and the TF V12. Now these are some exceptionally popular tanks, and they're popular for good reason too. They come in a bunch of cool colors, the build quality is really good, the vapor production is really good, the flavor is really good, and they have the capacity to be ridiculously powerful. So let's go ahead and dive down and take a closer look at them. Alright guys, so first off we're just going to do a little size comparison here. You can see here I have the Baby Beast, the Big Baby Beast, the V8 Cloud Beast, and the TFV12 Cloud King. You can see they go up in size as we go along here, and these two will use the Baby Beast coils, and these guys are going to use the Big Brother coils. We got the V8 coils, of course, in there, and then the V12 coils, of course, in the V12. Now, the Baby series of tanks here, they're going to be a little bit less powerful. They're typically rated somewhere around, I'd say, 40 to 90 watts in the uh, recommended best range, which we'll get into a little bit later here. And then we have the huge ones here. Now, some people can run these tanks at like 65 watts with no problems. Most people are going to be running these tanks in the 80 to 160 watt range, I would say. If you take a look at the airflow on them here, you've got pretty similar airflow between the Baby Beast and the Big Baby Beast. The Big Baby Beast has a little bit more available to you, as well as on the top here, the Big Baby Beast has an 810 connection, where the Baby Beast has a 510 connection. So you've essentially just got a larger chimney in the big baby beast. Again, just lets more airflow through there. Now the big boys here are both running 810 connections, so they've both got the larger chimneys. They both have pretty ridiculous airflow, although the TFV12, I would say, is a, a good deal more ridiculous. You can see this is just a massive gaping maw, and that is not laughable airflow by any means, so this thing is just going to be able to give you more airflow than anybody could ever want, really. You can see size-wise on the Baby Beasts here, there's a pretty significant difference. This one is 22 millimeters, the Baby Beast, and then the Big Baby Beast, like the TF V8, is 24 and a half millimeters. That slight increase in height as well as diameter allows you to go from a 3.5 mil tank up to a 5 mil tank. So essentially, you get a little bit more airflow going through the Big Baby Beast, and you have more airflow available to you. Now for size, of course, the Baby Beast is still a great tank, but the big one I personally prefer for basically any application. If you can spare the size, then you get a bigger tank so you don't have to fill up as often, and you get more airflow available to you. Now, size-wise between the big boys here, we've got the TFV8, that one's going to be a 5 milliliter tank, and then the TFV12, which is going to be a 6 milliliter tank. So, you can see they're about the same diameter, about the same height, there's not a huge size difference really, but it does get a little bit wider around the middle here, the midsection between these uh, little textured bits here, and that's going to give you that extra 1 milliliter. Now, it's not going to be a huge difference in capacity, obviously one milliliter isn't very much, and you're not really going to have to fill up less often either, because the TFV12 is of course a little bit more powerful as well, so it'll go through that juice just about as fast as the TFV8 will. Now all of these tanks are really easy to open, this is probably one of the key features of these tanks. If you see that little open right there, it's got the arrow pointing that way, you can just pop that open, you can see that separates, we've got the hinge on this side. Just swing it open, and then we can fill through that little slot there. Don't want to get down the chimney, of course, you just want to go into that little slot. So they're super, super easy to fill. It can be a little bit difficult if you've got a glass bottle with a dropper, but plastic bottles, just squeeze bottles, are super, super easy. Now, as far as durability on this, it's, uh, it's not as good as it could be, I don't think, but considering the design and everything, it's pretty darn good. Of course, you don't want to be ripping on that top cap or anything, but you've got a pretty thick little pin there that's holding everything together, so it's a little bit wiggly, and it can bend if you're not careful, but overall, it's been pretty darn durable. The only part that I've seen fail pretty frequently is this top seal here, and not only does it come with an extra top seal, but you can buy them separately as well. Now, the drip tips on all of these are just going to be held in with o-rings, so they pull straight out. You can put whatever custom tip you want on there. You can see we have an acrylic one on this guy. These particular drip tips on these tanks are from Asmodus. One thing that I do have to talk about is when these tanks are new, they are a massive pain to take apart. 
I don't know if it's that they put them together when they're still hot from the factory or moisture or what, but when these things are new, they are ridiculously tight and the o-rings tend to stick as well, so all in all they're just incredibly difficult to get apart straight out of the box. After you get it apart the first time though, it's pretty simple. Coil's always the worst part. There we go. And again, once this all gets juice in it and everything, it becomes really simple to take it apart, but fresh out of the box you will struggle with it. Now since we have it apart here, we can take a look at this coil. So this guy is going to be the Q2. This is the Baby Beast single core coil. Now between the different coils on these tanks, you're not necessarily going off of resistance because you're going to see a very similar resistance on a lot of them. The difference really comes in with how many coils there are in there. So of course this one is the single core. You'll also have a dual core. That one's going to be the X4. People call it the shotgun coil because it's like a double barreled shotgun. So you got two coils inside of that guy. There's the T6 which is then going to be the triple core. Uh, again, T6, they call it the six coil, but there's three cores in there with the two coils in each of them. And then same thing with the T8, that guy is going to be the quad core. Now interestingly enough, the X4, the dual core one, is actually going to be the lowest powered of them, uh, for the normal ones at least. There are a couple different kinds that are a little less common and a little lower powered. And then the T6, the triple core one, is going to be the most powerful. A lot of people think it's actually going to be the T8 because it has the most coils, but since you're working with a really limited space here, the quad core, the coils get a little bit smaller because they have to cram them in there. On the triple core, the coils can be a little bit bigger and that allows you to have a little bit more airflow and a little bit more power. Now on the TFV8, the full size, you've got a pretty similar selection of coils. There's the single core, the dual core, the triple core, and the quad core. And then there's the five core. That one they stick, of course, ten coils in there, as they call it ten. Most of the time they're just kind of doubling up those numbers because they're parallel coils, which means it's two wires right next to each other and then they make the coil out of that. So really it's still kind of five coils in there, but that's how they like to refer to their coils. Nonetheless, I'm personally running the triple coil in here. You might be able to see the coils peeking out down inside of there. I really like the flavor and the smoothness of the airflow and the vapor density and the heat off of this coil. It's just a perfect balance on everything for me. And down inside of each one of those cores uh, is a fused Clapton. So you remember I told you a lot of the time they call them uh, double the number of coils that there are cores because they do it parallel. Well, a fused Clapton, if you're unfamiliar, you do still have the, that parallel coil, but then you wrap that like a wound guitar string. So you've just got a lot more surface area, all kinds of little nooks and crannies for the juice to get into, and you end up with really good flavor. Originally I was running the shotgun coil on this, that dual core, and the airflow didn't seem very smooth. It was a little, uh, there was a little bit of like buffeting. It was kind of a strange sensation. A lot of people still like that coil, but I personally prefer that nice smooth airflow. Now I run this coil at about 115 watts on my Relo RX200, and that's the sweet spot for me. You can see here, I mentioned we were gonna talk about the um, recommended and best recommended wattage ranges. We've got our resistance on the coil there, 0.2 ohms. The full range, which they recommend 50 to 240 watts on this coil, and then it says best there, and it says 110 to 150. Now, I always stri try to stick to the best range. If you're outside of the best range, you're probably getting significantly worse performance. You're going to be getting spitting or leaking issues, the coil is going to be drying out, the flavor is just not going to be there, it's going to be hot and muggy all kinds of things like that, so they did really provide a service to us by saying this is going to be the best range to run it in, instead of, yeah, I guess you can run it here. So again, I'm just inside of that best range at 115 watts, but I find if I go any higher than that, uh, again, it just becomes hot and muggy and the flavor starts going away for me. Now on the TFV12 here, again, really similar selection of coils, you got the single core, dual core, triple core, uh, quad core, and then I believe it jumps straight to the 12, the uh, of course, T12, which is going to be the 6 core. It's like, a, you know, a revolver or something. It's it's pretty crazy to look at. And of course, it's ridiculously high powered too. It's rated for something up to like 300, 350 watts, something like that. Of course, the best range is significantly lower than that. But right now in this guy, we've got the shotgun coil where 
got a got a full range of 60 to 200 watts and the best range is 90 to 130 watts and again that one's a 0.15 as I said you'll see 0.15 on multiple coils 0.2 on multiple coils really the resistance has a lot less to do with it than the number of cores inside of the coil one thing I found pretty interesting about these tanks specifically the TFV 12 is they market the glass as explosion proof glass which if you've ever vaped really hard way harder than you should have on a tank, then you may have gotten it hot enough to crack the glass before. That's my guess with this one, is when they were vaping on it, it was just getting so hot the glass would actually break, or potentially even explode, judged by their uh, their naming technique there. So, it's got explosion-proof glass, whatever that means, it might just be normal Pyrex, but uh, so far so good. It's been pretty durable glass, not that much more durable than standard glass, but it doesn't explode, so I guess they, uh, they got that right. You may have already noticed as well, three of the tanks that I have here have the rainbow finish on there. Now that is a heat-treated finish, they basically just put it in an oven until they get that kind of color to it, which obviously we love. You can see these three tanks have juice in them already. This is my coworkers, the TFV-12 is my coworkers, and the TFV-8 is my own. We all love the rainbow finish, just think it's really cool. And then this guy I had on display out there, this is the uh, stainless, of course. Now it does come with the, the orange o-rings there, but all of these will come with different colored o-rings if you want to run different ones. As well as these little vape bands here. The TFV-8 comes with something a little bit more simple, kind of have that embedded lettering in there. The TFV-12 comes with these big rings here with Beast King printed on there and it says TFV-12 on the other side. You get one uh, one red, one black, I believe no matter what color you get. And then uh, same thing I believe with all three of these guys, you get one black, one orange. So it's a really nice thing that they include some vape bands in there. can give you a little bit of a closer look at some of the coloration on this rainbow finish here. Looks really cool around the bottom typically around the uh, the base here as well. You get a lot of really cool colors. And for some reason on the top ends, they're usually a little bit more dull. You can see this section specifically. There's not a whole lot going on there. But it still matches with the rest of the tank. You still get some good coloration up there. Overall, it's just a really cool look. Especially with that acrylic drip tip on there. Now a lot of people ask me what the main difference is between the TFV-8 and the TFV-12. There's not really a main difference, but I suppose you could say primarily it's really just the coil. So, of course, you do have a little bit of uh, difference in airflow, a little difference in look, a little difference in feel even, taking the tank apart with that textured stuff. But really, it comes down to the coil. The coil on the TFV-12, you might be able to see, is significantly larger than the TFV-8. It's not enormous by comparison. Though, of course, it is enormous. It's just a little bit bigger, which allows them to get a few more coils in there. That doesn't necessarily make it the higher-powered tank. I've actually heard of many people running these tanks with the T12 coil at 65 watts, and it does wonderfully for them. I'm not entirely sure how that's possible, because, you know, you'd assume at that low power on a coil like that, you'd end up getting leaking issues or something, but basically, it's down to which one you like better, uh, what kind of coil option you would like, and potentially if you do want to run higher or lower power. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well, which one of them is the best? Well, it's not really down to best in general, but what's best for you, really? So again, if you're looking for something small, compact, and still nice and powerful, the Baby Beast is a fantastic choice. If you're willing to go a little bit bigger, maybe you're running a single or dual battery device still, but you want a little bit more capacity on there, or you just like the look of the bigger tank, the Big Baby Beast, I think, is one of the best tanks on the market right now. And between the TFV-8 and the TFV-12, again, it's just whichever one you like the look of better, and if you do want to have that ridiculously high capacity, although there will be a little bit of a difference between the coils, of course, like if uh, we were running the triple coils on each of these, the triple coil and the V-12 is going to be a little bit more powerful, a little bit more power hungry, a little bit more juice hungry, where the TFV-8 is going to be just a little bit more reasonable. Not that either of these tanks are particularly reasonable. They're going to be ridiculously high powered. I think I covered just about everything there, so last thing before we go up, these do of course all have a 510 connection on the bottom, so they'll fit on just about any device out there. 
just make sure that you have enough power to run it. If you're running the baby beasts, you can run them on a single battery without any issues, but if you're trying to run these guys on a single battery device, you're not going to have any fun at all. And even the dual battery device, depending on how much you use it, can be a little too power hungry. So a, a triple battery or quad battery device is really going to suit you better if you're going to be using these at high power all day long, every day. So let's go ahead and bring this up top and see how they work. Alright, so first I'm going to be vaping off of the big baby beast here. We've got it on top of this G-Priv. It's a really cool device. You can check out my video on that if you want to see more of that. And I'm not going to be vaping on the baby beast today because they're just so similar. We're just going to stick with this guy. So let's go ahead and see how it does. We're running 89 watts and we've got the quad core coil in there. Definitely tighter on airflow than the V8 and the V12. Still really good flavor, great vapor production, a good amount of heat too. That's actually a pretty reasonable vape. I think if you're uh, you're pretty new to sub-ohming and you're kind of worried about going with something too powerful because you're not sure if it's just going to be too much or uncomfortable or anything like that, this will be a really good way to go because it's going to be a little bit more reserved, it's going to be easier to get into, you can run lower power levels and you can run higher power levels. Yeah, great vape off of that. I'm really impressed with these guys. Absolutely love them. Now we're going to move up to the TFV8. As I said, I'm running mine here on my RX200, the original RX200 with the little screen on there. I've got the triple core in there, and I'm running 115 watts. So let's go ahead and see how that does. Of course, probably unsurprising, lot higher power, better on vapor production if you're looking for higher vapor production of course, better on airflow again if you're looking for more airflow, and I'm not really gonna say it's better or worse on flavor. The flavor I think is really impressive out of the Baby Beast, but I, I really like the sensation of the flavor off of the TFV8. I think the larger tank lends itself to lighter flavors quite nicely. If you're into maybe creams or light fruits, things like that, if you're using the Baby Beast coils, then those ones are really good for bright, fruity flavors or really any powerful flavor. Really just because of the amount of vapor production. If you put something like the flavor that's in the, uh, the Big Baby Beast in here, it'd probably just be kind of overpowering and and I, I just don't think I would enjoy it very much. So they do definitely serve their own purpose per tank. As I said before, the airflow on that triple coil is super smooth. The vapor is really thick and creamy and the flavor, it's just, it's a little bit wet and it's not too intense, but it's just really delicious. And the airflow again is just silky smooth. Love it. Now I will also mention, the TFV8 and I believe the TFV12 come with a 510 adapter, uh, and I think even the Baby Beast does as well, because that one is also an 810 naturally. So if you want to run a 510 on these tanks, you can, but I would warn you that that's going to tighten up your airflow quite a lot, and it's probably going to become a lot hotter, and you don't get the same sort of distribution of vapor as it enters your mouth. So personally, I really like running the 810 on there. I think it performs really nicely. Now before we move up to the V12, I just wanted to show you one of the coils on its own. This is, if you can see, the 6 core one. You got a fused clapton in each of those cores, which is why Smoke calls it the T12 coil. Now I've got my all-in-one here for comparison. You can see that coil almost eats the all-in-one. It's a massive, massive coil. In fact, even in comparison to the big baby beast, it wouldn't even fit inside of that tank. It's absolutely huge. So again, I've got my coworkers set up here. We've got the limited edition gold snow wolf, just beautiful thing. Of course, with the rainbow TFV12 up top. He's actually running the shotgun coil in there, that dual core, uh, at 101 watts. So let's see how this guy does. Now, you might be hearing the airflow kind of like buzzing a little bit. It's kind of making a, a bit of a strange noise. I'll, I'll take a puff without vaporizing. 
Do you hear that? It's almost like whistling, kind of. It's kind of a strange noise on the airflow there. And he had it cut down to basically a little square there. So we're going to go ahead and try it like that. Wow, the flavor is significantly better cutting the airflow down like that. The buzzing is still there. That must be just going through the coil, I guess. The airflow wide open, again, is it's like breathing normally. Like, there's no resistance at all, even though you've got the dual cord in there. Cut down, there is, of course, a lot more resistance, but the flavor really came alive. Wide open, it was sort of diluted. It was like air and flavor. You, you could tell that it wasn't the full flavor. Cut down like this, you get a lot better vapor density, and the flavor is much more powerful. The airflow, even though it's buzzing a little bit, is still really smooth. Alright guys, so I think we covered just about everything there. My summary would just be, these tanks can all be the best tanks. It just depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I went with the TFV8 because it's just a little bit smaller and a little bit more reasonable on power and juice consumption. The TFV12 is of course a monster, it's a very good looking tank. They're all very good looking tanks, they're really well built, super easy to fill, just very well designed tanks. It's a no brainer if you're looking for something higher powered. So thank you guys so much for watching today, if I missed anything, please feel free to leave a comment, let me know if you have any other questions about them, and if you like the video, please go ahead and leave me a like, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest and greatest videos from Vaporleaf. We'll see you next time, bye.